Welcome to Cruisin' Motorhomes. Thank you for choosing to travel with us. This video will cover everything you need to know about how to prepare, operate and maintain your Cruisin' Motorhome and will ensure you experience an exciting and hassle-free cruising adventure in Australia. Cruisin' has branches in Sydney, Brisbane, the Gold Coast, Hobart and Launceston, making it easy for you to explore whichever corner of Australia you choose. We offer two, three, four and six berth vehicles for your convenience. This guide is not definitive and we ask that you view it in conjunction with the Cruising User Manual located in your vehicle. Should you have any further questions or queries throughout your journey, please don't hesitate to contact the toll-free Cruising Hotline. This number can be found on your key ring or on the cover of your user manual along with other important contact information. The motorhome is equipped with a range of facilities to make your holiday more enjoyable. On your journey we encourage you to adopt environmentally friendly procedures and ensure you follow the road rules and are conscious of other drivers at all times. Smoking is strictly forbidden in all cruising vehicles. Heavy penalties apply to vehicles found with any trace of smoke. Before we demonstrate how the appliances on board work, there are a few important things to remember before you begin your journey. At a height of 3.2 metres, the motorhome is much higher than a standard car and must be driven to accommodate its size. When on the road, give way to faster vehicles and never hold up traffic, as this is a major cause of road incidents. Always be aware of the motorhome's dimensions and keep this in mind when approaching low built structures on the road, undercover parking or low hanging trees and awnings in restricted areas. When on the road, Cruisin recommends keeping a substantial distance from vehicles in front of you to avoid stones flicking up and causing windscreen damage. Before you depart on your Cruisin holiday, there are a number of things to check for. Start inside the motorhome and ensure all kitchen appliances are disconnected and stored in the cupboards and drawers to prevent rattling and breakages in transit. Make sure the stovetop is in the closed position. Close all vents and windows. On the outside of the motorhome, retract the outdoor step. Ensure the gas has been turned off at the bottle and the grey water outlet is in the closed position. Walk around your vehicle and be aware of any obstructions in the way of your exit. To avoid overhead damage when parking or reversing, Cruisin recommends that a second passenger stand outside the vehicle where they can help guide the motorhome safely out of or into any restricted spaces. Ensure the driver can see the passenger in the side mirror at all times. The driver's cabin in the motorhome is slightly different to a standard car. Before you drive the vehicle, adjust the seat and mirrors, set the air conditioner or heater to your desired temperature and turn on the stereo. It is important that you are not distracted while driving. Ensure that everyone in the vehicle is wearing their seatbelts. Only seats with seatbelts can be occupied while the motorhome is in transit. Your vehicle is equipped with an outdoor step for easy access to and from the vehicle. Be sure to fold up the step before driving to avoid damage. To open the main cabin door, first unlock the lock to the left with the small silver key. You must then unlock the second lock with a separate key on your key ring. To open the windows in the motorhome, Press in the red button on each window latch and slide the lever up at the same time. Once all levers have been released, the window can be pushed gently out until it clicks into place. When closing the window, fully extend it out until the last click before slowly drawing it back in and repositioning the latches into their original position. Gently use the grey lever to attach the night screen to the top of the window. To draw the fly screens, pull down the silver curtain bar and attach it to the bottom of the window by carefully lifting the plastic lever. Cruisin recommends that you check the engine oil, brake fluids, water levels and tyre pressure every 500 kilometres. 
To open the bonnet of the vehicle, locate the lever under the steering wheel and lift. Open the bonnet of the vehicle as you would in a standard car. There is a spare tyre located underneath the rear of the vehicle. If you are unsure how to change a tyre, contact the Free Call Cruising Hotline for advice and or assistance. If you do experience any mechanical difficulties along the way, Cruising provides 24-hour roadside assistance. Call our hotline and we will dispatch someone to assist as soon as possible. The fuel filling point is located on the driver's side of the vehicle and can be accessed by a small silver key on your key ring. To remove the cap on the filling point, insert the key and apply pressure as you turn it anti-clockwise. You must only fill the inlet with the fuel type specified. Once you have filled the tank, replace the cap. You will know it is locked when it turns continuously. Please be mindful that the fuel and water caps are the same in appearance. Please take a moment to ensure you are filling the correct tank. On board the motorhome are a number of features to ensure you experience a comfortable holiday. Cruise and vehicles work on an auxiliary battery system which powers internal features such as the lights, water pump, water heater, toilet and fridge. In order for the electrical system to work, the 12 volt main panel must be turned on. To turn it on, hold down the red power button for approximately 3 seconds and operate the 12 volt appliances by pressing the 12 volt button until it changes to blue. The control panel displays the vehicle's remaining charge. At a full charge, the control panel will be displaying approximately 14 volts and will provide between 12 and 20 hours of power depending on use. The battery will recharge when you are driving the vehicle or connected to mains power. All cruising vehicles have a circuit breaker. Ensure that this switch is always in the on position and avoid touching it if the electrical system is in fine working order. The circuit breaker is located directly behind the television. To conserve battery power, turn off the 12 volt appliances when you are not using them and connect to a 240 volt mains powered outlet at a caravan park at least every second night. All cruising vehicles are equipped with a 15 amp extension lead to connect to the caravan park's powered outlet. This lead is located in the storage compartment on the driver's side of the vehicle. When you are plugged into 240 volt mains, all appliances on board the motorhome will automatically run. You must be plugged into mains in order to operate the microwave, power points and heater and air conditioner unit on board your vehicle. Your motorhome is equipped with cabin lights. To operate the lights, turn on the 12 volt main switch. Some lights in the motorhome need to be operated manually by turning the light on and off directly at the switch. The night lights have two settings for your convenience. Ensure you turn the lights off after use to conserve battery power. The outdoor light can be operated by turning on the light switch at the far right side of the 12 volt panel. The three-way fridge on board the motorhome operates on 12 volt, 240 volt and gas. Locate the three-way panel by pulling down the plastic cover on top of the fridge. To operate the fridge, first ensure that the 12 volt button is on. Please follow these instructions to ensure hassle-free use of the fridge. When the engine is running, the fridge will run off the 12 volt system. To run the fridge off 12 volt power, Ensure that the white mark on the dial is set to the battery symbol seen here. When you are connected to a 240 volt powered outlet at an authorised caravan park, the fridge will operate via 240 volt power. To operate the fridge on 240 volt, turn the white mark on the dial so that it is set to the cord symbol featured here. While running the fridge of 12 volt and 240 volt power, the white mark on the temperature dial should be set on this setting. To operate the fridge on gas whilst free camping, first ensure that the gas bottle is fully open outside the motorhome. Once you have fully opened the gas bottle, 
Set the dial on the fridge panel to the symbol featured here. Next, turn the dial on the far right hand side of the panel to the HI setting. Hold down the dial on the HI setting while pressing the spark switch located directly next to this dial. Once the gas has ignited, the red line will move from the white section into the green. Do not turn your fridge off as it will no longer insulate your food. The motorhome must be parked on level ground to operate the fridge on gas. The motorhome is equipped with a television and DVD player for your entertainment. The television must be tuned at each location before use. Television reception varies depending on your location. Please refer to the Cruising User Manual for directions on how to tune the television. To operate the TV, ensure the 12 volt main button is on. Turn on the booster switch located directly behind the television. A light will appear when the booster switch is on. Press the power button on the remote. The microwave on board the motorhome is the same as you would find in a standard household. Please consult the Cruising User Manual for a list of objects which should not be put in the microwave. In the kitchen you will find a number of appliances located in the cupboards and drawers, including a toaster, kettle, cups and glasses, plates, bowls and cutlery. Once you have finished using these appliances, please store them in the cupboards and drawers to prevent breakages from occurring while in transit. The LP gas bottle on board the motorhome provides gas for the stove, fridge and water heater. Ensure you take the necessary safety precautions when dealing with the gas. Gas bottles should not be removed from their storage compartment or taken out of the upright position so they are easily accessible in case of emergency. When not in use or when travelling, the bottle must be turned off. Windows and vents must be opened before operating gas appliances, but beware of drafts extinguishing the flame on the stove. To open the gas bottle, turn the valve in an anti-clockwise direction. To close, turn the valve in a clockwise direction. For your safety, the vehicle is equipped with a fire extinguisher and smoke alarm. Please consult the Cruising User Manual for further instructions on how to operate these safety devices. Your motorhome is equipped with a three burner gas stove. When cooking, open the stove lid before turning on the gas bottle outside the vehicle. After you have fully opened the gas bottle, push in the burner knob and turn it to maximum heat. While you are holding down the burner knob, press the ignite switch until the gas lights. If the flame does extinguish, you may have let go of the burner knob too soon. Start from the beginning. Once you have finished cooking, allow time for the stove to cool before replacing the lid. Turn the gas off at the bottle before travelling or sleeping. To heat the water in your shower and sink, operate the water heater approximately 20 minutes to half an hour before use. Ensure that the gas bottle is fully open and that you have enough fresh water in the water tank. Turn on the water heater switch. This switch is located directly below the 12 volt main panel. A red light will appear for approximately 30 seconds before extinguishing, indicating that the system is working. If the light comes back on, you have been unsuccessful at igniting the water heater. If this happens, turn everything off and try again. You can attempt to heat the water three times. If you are still unsuccessful, wait 10 to 15 minutes before trying again. In the motorhome, you will find an onboard bathroom with a shower and toilet. To operate the toilet, ensure the 12 volt button is on and that the flush has been filled outside the vehicle. Prior to use, open the toilet to join it to the cassette below. Once finished, press the blue button to operate the flush and place the white lever back into the closed position. Close the lid. The toilet should be emptied regularly and must be emptied before return to avoid fees. To empty the toilet, locate the cassette outside the vehicle on the driver's side. Lift the lever and pull the cassette out of the motorhome. If you experience a jam, do not force the cassette. 
Check inside the vehicle to ensure that the toilet is in the closed position. Once you have access to the cassette, twist out the pour out spout and unscrew the cap. You can dispose of waste in a sewage dump point at selected caravan parks or in a normal toilet facility. Once you have emptied the toilet, add the cleaning chemical along with half a litre to a litre of water. Secure the cassette back in its storage compartment so that it is aligned with the toilet above. To fill the flush, twist out the top spout and unscrew the cap. Use the standard water hose to replenish the water and replace the cap. You can check to see that the flush is full at the clear indicator next to the cassette. The grey water tank collects the water from the shower, kitchen and bathroom sink. You must manually empty the tank by connecting the grey water hose to the grey water outlet. Please empty the grey water tank before returning to the cruising depot to avoid fees. The grey water hose is located in the storage compartment on the driver's side of the vehicle. Attach the hose to the grey water outlet and ensure it is firmly secured. Place the other end of the hose into a dump station and turn the valve so that it is parallel with the pipe. Close the valve once you have emptied the tank and store the hose back in the compartment. The fresh water tank is located on the driver's side of the vehicle and is marked by a tap symbol. To remove the cap on the filling point, insert the key and apply pressure as you turn it anti-clockwise. Insert the blue water hose approximately 1 metre into the tank. Connect the fitting and hose to the tap and fill the tank with water. You must fill the tank slowly as it does not have a breather and an airlock may occur. Should you experience an airlock, remove the hose, reinsert it and attempt again. Remove the hose once finished and replace the cap. Disconnect the fitting and hose from the tap. To operate mains water, screw on the orange fitting and attach the hose. This will provide water directly to the sink and shower from the tap. To use water from the water tank, turn on the water pump on the 12 volt panel. You can check the level of your fresh water at the monitor located on this panel. The table is located at the rear of the vehicle. To access the table, lift the lid of the wooden compartment and use the handle to extend the table and secure it in place. The motorhome is equipped with a double bed over the driver's cabin and a single at the rear. To set up the rear bed, first ensure that the tabletop is stored away. Locate the bed boards underneath the seat on the side of the kitchen. Insert these bed boards between the two seats to make up the base of the bed. Place the cushions onto the bed base to complete the bed. The heating and air conditioning system on board the motorhome allows you to set the temperature to suit you. Before you operate the system, ensure that all windows and vents are closed. You must be connected to 240 volt power in order for the heating and air conditioning system to work. Locate the remote control and turn on the device until the light appears. You can set the temperature and mode on the remote. The motorhome is equipped with an awning for the purpose of providing shade and should not be used in windy or rainy weather conditions. The awning winder arm is located inside the vehicle. Place the hook of the awning winder arm into the socket and unwind until the awning is fully extended. The support legs are located at the base of the awning and can be lifted out. Slide out the end before lifting out the remainder of the leg. When you lift out the awning leg, the wing nut must be facing inward to avoid damage. Loosen the wing nut and attach the awning leg to the attachment point. Repeat the same process to the other side and then extend the awning and tighten both wing nuts on the awning legs. Make sure the awning is extended to a height where you can safely open the door. 
To retract the awning, repeat the same process in reverse and store the awning winder arm back inside the vehicle. To avoid relevant fees, it is important that the vehicle is returned to the depot in a clean and orderly state. Before you return the vehicle, empty any food contents out of the fridge, clean cooking utensils and equipment, remove food and possessions from the cupboards and drawers, open and straighten the curtains, strip the linen off all beds and refill the fuel. The grey and black water tanks must be emptied before return. Thank you for choosing to travel with us here at Cruisin'. We hope you enjoy your stay and look forward to seeing you again soon.